<laughs> Hi. All right, guys. I'm gonna just start recording this. Yeah, it's uh, it's my pyramid scheme. People think I'm a wedding photographer, but actually, uh, it's all it's all a big pyramid scheme. Um, you know you're not gonna be happy that I already put it. Yeah. So, just... <laughs> All right, so. Oh, it's got, is it even gonna cut up into? Oh, okay. No, 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 that's just, just holding, holding it. it. I have a I different like, one. I have a different one, but I freaking lost it. All right, I'm just gonna have the headphones on just so I could make sure what's coming through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sounds great, right, and then. I see those levels moving. Yeah, yeah, it's picking stuff up. You, you probably could operate a soundboard way better than I could. Um, I actually have a similar one. Oh, do you really? Fact, yeah. Yeah, I am grossly novice at it like embarrassingly bad um that's how you get good at something though you know that. <laughs> right exactly <laughs> all right so okay so um yeah so i have to you'll hear the music and then i'm going to introduce us and then we can start talking and then i think i mentioned to you that um one of the things that like the podcast is kind of like evolving and talking more about is just like what it means to follow your passions and, and, you know, break away from the mold. Like, do you work a nine to five? Do you try to move full time into, into your, your passion? And, um, like we're all at varying stages of that. Like I'm like further down that path and Mandy, you're like in between, like quit her day job, did it full time for a time. Now is doing something small, like a small day job, like mm -hmm. in the interim. And I know that you like, are interested in it but you still have a day job so what does that balance look like yeah. and that type of stuff so we have one from every single yes. category and like it's just cool right like it's a cool thing like inspiring people like what if there's somebody yeah. out there who's like wants to take the lead but is like nervous right yeah. so um you couldn't have picked a better subject for me either well, <laughs> you, seem so, yeah. you were so passionate about it when we talked so i'm like oh my gosh i All saw right. that topic and i was like I hope she's fine with me talking yes, like talk. forever about talk it. Talk forever. <laughs> All right, I'm going to uh, go ahead and start it. So you'll hear my little intro music and then I'll introduce us. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody for joining us. Today I'm super excited because I have Mandy and Eric here with me. So Mandy and Eric um, are both really, really fortunate people in that they've found something they love doing, Mandy with photography, Eric with video, and we've been talking a lot about what it means to pursue your passions. Um, do you get to a point where you can quit the day job completely? Or do you stay and do kind of like a hybrid? What kind of support do you have to have at home to take a leap like that? And Mandy, um, Mandy, it's it's very interesting how I got to know Mandy. Uh, if any of you listen to my podcast, you right rem remember the first episode yeah. I ever did. Mandy came on. She was um, a bride of ours. Uh, and obviously she has a love for photography. So she came in and she did the podcast where, here, let me move this this way so that I can talk to you both. I felt like I'm like, oh, I got to lean into the mic. Um, she came in and did a podcast like how to use your camera. And that was many, many years ago. And uh, just follow, follow. And why don't you tell like where you went from there? Like how we officially knew each other when you, when you opened up on Facebook and your husband oh thought God. I was going to hate you and you said that on <laughs> Facebook. I... It was after I got my photos. From it was after my wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. It was after my wedding. I got my photos back and I was like, this is what I have to do. I love this. Like, I love these photos. I, I want to be a photographer. And I didn't like my nine to five. I didn't really like what I was doing. And I said, all right, today, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it out there, put out the feels and see if anybody will bite. So I put a Facebook status up and I was like, if I start photography, will anybody be willing to do some free shoots or would anybody be willing to, you know, help me out and build a portfolio? 
And my husband immediately was like, you got to take that down. And I was like, why? He's like, we're friends with our photographer who did our wedding. She's going to think you're trying to steal her business. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, maybe you're right. I don't want to make her mad. And Mandy, um, Eric, you <laughs> probably was... didn't work like personally with her yet. Eric, um, just so you guys know, Eric is actually an amazing videographer that I got to know um, recently. And he's been working along with us when we have brides who to um, ask for video. So uh, Mandy is like very outgoing, but also like never <laughs> yeah. wants to like, never like wants to like, put somebody off that like she likes like so like oh my gosh I don't want her to be mad at me I know I was like oh my god you're right I, I should delete the post I gotta delete the post I deleted the post and not even five minutes later I got a text from Deanna and I have to tell you I couldn't even open it I was like <laughs> she saw it she saw it and Mike was like I told you I told you she's probably mad but she wasn't mad. She was like, I want you to work for me. Like, if you're really interested, let's do it. And I was like, oh, my God, are you kidding? Like, really? And she was like, yeah, here's the next wedding I'm shooting. I want you to come this Saturday and we'll, you know, we'll work together and I'll get you going. And I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> All right. So and then that was the end of that. Like, we just um and you do I, really I fell well. In love, I fell in love with it. Yeah, Mandy. So Mandy um, works for the company doing weddings, but she also does family portraits on the side and like low key a little bit of competition. No, it's cool. It's cool because <laughs> we also do family portraits. But no, Man Mandy's amazing, and you know I only want to see her succeed um so yeah so she does do the weddings with us but then she also has man what what's the name of it mc photography mc mc photography no. so for family portraits and stuff like that yeah so like of course everybody would call us first but we're, yeah, of, course, of course of course of course <laughs> no mandy mandy is very very awesome she plugged you before she plugged uh, uh, i did i did <laughs> yeah i did do that so i have that going for me I'm going to move it just a little bit closer to you. Um, yeah, so, and Mandy, you did quit, like, your day job. Mm -hmm. So how yep. did, how, how did that come about? Because um, you were married, you're, you're, you're not married, you're engaged or have a long-term girlfriend? Long-term. Long-term girlfriend. girlfriend. I'm always, as a wedding photographer in the wedding I industry, know. you always want everybody to get married. I'm yeah. always. All eyes on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After Sorry. she hears this podcast, she's going to be like, oh, great. He he did he, he did you know heart bump like been with her for so long I love her no he did talk it was one of the first things he met mentioned right we were like chatting and oh, yeah. it came up like fairly quickly into the conversation so you have a very very good guy um, but how did that work like with Mike like talking about doing that he he was actually really supportive my husband Mike he was like if that's what you love do it. If that's how you want to do it, that's great. I want you to be happy. I was just so miserable at a nine to five. Like, were you? I, I was miserable. Like, you get up, you rush to get dressed, you rush to get out of the house, rush to work. By the time I got home, it was like, I'm so exhausted. Let's make a quick dinner, shower, and then I'd go to bed. Like, I felt like right. every day was the same meaningless thing for yeah. me almost and what know? was the industry you were in what i was in ophthalmology. ophthalmology i worked with an eye doctor okay yeah, Interesting. yeah. so you were before <laughs> working in optometry but now you're using your eyes <laughs> for something <laughs> else <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep so now i have free contact now i'm just kidding <laughs> contacts for life yeah contacts for life but um I told him it's not you know ophthalmology was not what i was interested in it was really paying my bills that's great but there was no passion right. in the career yeah. it was like okay i'm here clock in oh payday like it was nothing it that was groundhog I was, day yeah yes it was completely groundhog day and i was just kind of tired of it after a while and once i started doing weddings with deanna and kind of doing like some of my own stuff and like really getting into it i asked my husband like can I leave my job? And he was like, yeah, if you want to. 
<laughs> he was, yes. And he was like, yeah, it's fine. Like, if you want to leave your... And I was like, can you write that down? Just so, like, we're all clear on it. Like, down and let's uh, yeah, can you sign? I'm going to put it on the fridge. Um, but he let me leave my job. And it, it was... You have to have faith in what you're doing, I feel like. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do that following Monday morning after I quit. <laughs> like, I woke up and I was like... Oh, I'm a, I'm a photographer now. Really? Like, that's, that's it. I'm, I'm a photographer. I'm a it's photographer. To it. um, yeah. And, and with that risk, I find that putting yourself into that situation forces you to grow. And that yeah. is the best way to do it, is to be absolutely terrified of what's coming next yes. to the point where you just have to go out and do it. There's yeah. no other choice. And, and, you know, people will get too comfortable sometimes with what they're doing, and you, you can't put it it put in like that when you were comfortable yeah it's it's when you get uncomfortable is when all the magic comes out yeah and And it's so true like i didn't know what i was gonna do monday morning i woke up and was like well i'm a i'm a photographer like like my dad's like what are you doing home i'm like i'm a photographer now <laughs> like <laughs> that's that's what photographer it's like yeah. that mo- that meme like oh what do you do we wake up have chocolate for breakfast <laughs> yeah. go to work for one half hour to- yeah that was you like that's that's my that's life now. but work you're right one half like hour. i really was like if i don't hustle in two weeks that's it like i don't get paid next friday yeah, yeah. it's terrifying like i i you're- have to like and then, you know, Tuesday rolled around and I was like, I, I, I better get up on Facebook or something like you're it. Because that following Friday, like you have to subsidize your income and you have to hustle and get people. When you have a nine to five, the work is given to you. I feel, you know, they're like, oh, get all this done. Right. You don't have to get out there and find the people to get pay you yeah you know? you're and only getting paid as long as you're asking people to give you money yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so you have to like hustle to get these people and you got to stand out and you got to like give people a reason to come to you and to give you what you need and what work. do you what do you think like draws people to you like do you think and for both of you do you think like because everybody you obviously have to be outstanding you have to be good at what you're going to do right like obviously you have to be but like what do you think is also important like just like a personality yeah like Uh, yeah first time meeting you i can already tell you're very comfortable you smile you're very sociable right and it's the same thing with you when um i worked with yeah christy it was just right off the bat yeah it was like instantly right yeah and that's I feel like you see that a lot with people who are in the creative industry, whether it's photography, whether it's music, whether you're an artist, whenever you're working with somebody service-based, that one-on-one, very personal setting, like, you have to be human, right? Yeah. You can't be robotic or you can't look like you're miserable, you know? Like, we're we're in this business because we're passionate about it, and you can instantly see that, you know, passion come across. just quieter than the other. Yeah. yeah just try to be a little sorry yours is All right, just i got you okay <laughs> I'm so sorry show us your that. personality yeah <laughs> we'll start singing some duets yeah <laughs> you're, you're just like you're you're way too good for us to not all hear you <laughs> so you can keep going i didn't mean to cut you off oh yeah so instantly it's just like it's all, you're almost like infectious you know as soon as someone meets you you just gravitate towards them and and i think that comes from being passionate about what you're doing you know yeah and sometimes you'll somebody in a service industry if it's retail or you know if it's even food services like you can tell like the life is just being sucked out of them it's and that just, comes yeah. across in the the customer experience you know even if they're trained to put on the smile and be happy it's not it's not as genuine right whereas like you go into this knowing like i love it and it just comes out you know, to whoever you're working with. So yeah. right off the bat, from meeting you, from meeting Christy, from meeting you, Mandy, it's just, I feel like anybody who has taken that plunge and they're doing something they're passionate about, like they're happy, right? And when they're yeah. happier, you just, you feel that, right? It's something you can't fake. It's genuine. No, yeah, you can't fake it. So that's probably why it has to be important that it's a passion. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I agree. It has to be something that you wake up and you're like, this is what I'm doing. You're not right. like... I don't dread when I have to wake up to go shoot a wedding. Right. You know, I'm not like, oh, my God, I should text her. I should. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I would wake up, like, on my 9 to 5 and be like, 
uh, I don't think I'm going to go today. Right. I never once think about that when I have to shoot a wedding, shoot a family portrait, shoot inf- anything. It's okay, uh, let me do some research on my phone or let me see, you know, a good location. It's like exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. And then, like, for me, I feel like it's very, you hit a goal every time I finish an album. Mm -hmm. You know, I finish an album, I edit it, I send it to the person. Love it. And it's yours. And it's mine. And and it's yours. And, like, you know, and then once you're done, you're like, wow, I'm proud of that. Like, that's awesome. You made it, right? So when you work for a job, like you said, everything's given to you, right, to work on. And it, you can accomplish it, but one, the, the company gave that thing to you to work on. And two, you did it for them. And it's inherently theirs most of the time right whereas like this is your art you created this yes you gave it to a client of course but it's something you can look back on and um one of my friends had told me a while ago because you know i'm constantly busy i'm constantly at it making photo and video um and he really put things into perspective for me and he's like he's like you know to you you're running around you're working constantly on all these projects he's like but what you don't understand is that you're creating memories for all of these people around you. He's like, they're going to be, you know, elderly and they're going to be looking back at all of these memories. And you played a really important part in that. He's like, you don't think of it that way because you're running around constantly just going at it. It's (laughs) just another day of work for you, but you're really creating something special for others that they can look back on and their, you know, entire family can look back on. And it was like, you know what, when I think about that, like it really means a lot. You know, that I can do that for others. You know, like, I don't know if going to a fast food restaurant and ordering (laughs) a burger is really that service is like so meaningful. I'm going to look back, you know, 80 years from now and be like, oh, wonderful. I remember this piece of food from this day, you know, like. Oh, that takeout person. They they (laughs) really got me. They really got me. So it's like it's a super special line of work. Yes, is it extremely difficult in in being a creative? Yes, but it it does bring that deep, meaningful, you know. I feel like it goes to so many people, too. Like, if you think about, like, one photo at a wedding I just did, the bride was like, I need one of me and my grandma. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let's get that done. Let's, you know, let's make sure it's good and before ceremony, before dancing, before all that. And she's like, yeah, I just like, can I look at it once you take it? And I was like, yeah, of course, like, no problem. And she's like, it's just like, it has to go to like 30 something people in my family, like people that couldn't make it to the wedding. Yeah, yeah. That one photo is going to 30 people. That one like click that, you know, button I pressed. And then she edits it to make it look fantastic. <laughs> Literally starting with a very good base. Printed and goes to thirty something people. Like and it's crazy to think like about it, I guess that's impactful. Like, you're right. Yeah. It's impactful. Yeah. And people like have photos you know, pe- you think about like people who have photos like years down the road. Yeah, I had it so I was close with my grandparents and when they passed away, like one of the pictures that we put up um on the frame was a picture of me and my grandmother at our wedding day. And like that's the stuff I think about. Like it's so amazing. Mm, not amazing, like uh like a blessing, like meaningful that something we create is gonna be how somebody is memorialized yeah. for their life like sense yeah it's like an amazing gift to give somebody or like i think about you know you're you're older you have kids you have grandkids um my my mother-in-law my husband's mother was always really good about keeping photo albums and we would always be sitting around like christmas time and somebody would say something and she would run off and grab a photo album and and you were there you were living it and just knowing like one day, grandkids are going to be running around and somebody's going to talk about how crazy Aunt Joan yeah. was going nuts on the <laughs> dance floor. And, and someone's going to go run and pull out an album and be like, this was it. And yeah. it's like... It's a piece of history. We yeah. gave that to somebody. It's yeah. amazing. It's the the whole thing. Even like that's the whole point of being a photographer. Like times change, but like that moment doesn't. That moment's there forever. Yeah. And I love that, like, I love that impact on people, especially, like, with video. 
Everybody like hearing it, it yeah. seeing it's it. It's like a time capsule. It is. Right? People, a glimpse into the past. Yeah. And a lot of brides are like, oh, I wanted video. I didn't, you know, when you look at pictures, you don't know what song she was dancing right. to all the time. You know, like, I want to watch the video. Yeah. I want to see when she was doing that move. Like, <laughs> what song was, you know. And, and I've noticed video it. has come back. Like, video is very yes, popular, went on a pause. And I've noticed now, like... Girls want it. Like, almost everybody want wants it. Videos. Have you seen that same thing, that same trend where it's coming back where everybody has video? Yeah. Uh, not even just in, like, weddings. Just everywhere, you know? It, and it, don't get me wrong. Both of them play their role, right. right? And they're both inherently used for different things. But video is just, I feel, the quickest way to humanize something that you're trying to get across. Like, whatever right. message, right? An image, you know... There's nothing it's you can tamper or change. Thing. Yeah, w- w- video, you have so many. You have the visual element. Then you have the, the auditory element. And then w- once you break out past that, like, you know, what you're just filming verbatim, like, then you're adding in additional audio and sound. Right. You, you get into more of, like, the cinematography and the sound design, which can just evoke a whole other sense of emotions and feelings and that you can pull and play with and you know the way you edit footage you know by slowing down clips or certain right. transitions yeah. you know there's a whole entire art piece into that to evoke this feeling out of it yeah i never even thought about that to be honest because i'm always so focused on the one thing but you yeah. are like you're you're taking a memory but then you're creating a piece of art based on those memories yeah yeah, that is awesome. That's just, super awesome. It's just like with a photo editing, you know, like you have the photo you take verbatim, but then, right. you know, you want to amplify certain right. colors or, yeah. you know, you're looking for, you know, the color wheel in different complementary patterns or you're trying to <laughs> adjust the contrast, adjust the lighting, adjust the yes. brightness. Like there's a whole science. Do, do we want this to be a moody picture yeah. or a bright and airy picture? Yeah. Um, and then, so Eric, you guys may not know this, doesn't just do wedding photography, our video. He actually does a super cool thing. What's the other type of video that you were doing or are still doing or started doing? So music videos. Yes. Um, How music- cool is that? <laughs> cool. Music's my number not one. <laughs> but like how cool hey like, remember your, we talked about uh, the duet <laughs> what, what what's your job i just go hang out making rock videos like yeah, yeah. that's so, like an awesome thing is. music's like my number one passion and i've been a musician since i was in the fourth grade so how i started was as a musician right i'd be out playing shows i'm a drummer and i had a buddy of mine um, who actually has his own successful video business funny enough um who inspired me he'd go out on tour with uh, other bands in the local area that i was friends with and he'd take photos for them and i see these photos i'm like wow this is really cool you know like you get to see that action up on stage and I, that is what convinced me to get a camera so uh he would send me a few jobs and work with them and i how I'd go long out ago and, was that oh goodness <sighs> looking at like 2015 2016 okay so a decent a decent yeah time a while ago. a while back so I found myself at shows and now I have a camera, right? So after our, our band would play our set and we'd have three or four other bands on the set and that's how I got started, you know? And it, it was it's honestly terrible because if you're just starting out in photos, right? You think of all the things that a photographer gets terrified of, you know, is lights changing all of the yeah. time, the venue being extremely dark, and you got subjects moving around very fast. Literally the <laughs> worst possible Literally. thing. Yeah. Those lights moving it's dark and people like and drunk online. people bumping into you yeah. oh and keep in mind yeah oh. so I, I play metal music so you'll have oh, you'll have people yeah. running around pushing each other too so you're constantly like <laughs> looking back and forth you're making sure oh yeah and he's like, <laughs> you're lucky if you can get on the stage sometimes wow. you can get on the stage That's every once crazy. in a while but it's cool to see people's different passions on different things yeah I would have a complete panic attack going to it. I feel <laughs> like like I'd be like, don't touch me. Like, um, I, I like the weddings. You know, I like that whole sweet it's love. It's much calmer, thing. right? It's calm. I, I, I'm taking it's... photos and video in front of people screaming yeah. at you. So, like, for me, it's like, <laughs> wedding's like, wow, 
the lighting's like really nice. Yeah. People are happy. Not that people aren't happy at a metal show, no, but no, you know, but people are happy, but in an joy. angry way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like letting out emotion. Yeah. But so it's like it's this weird yin yang type That's of no, thing. No, I one of the things um, I talk about it all the time. So anybody who follows me knows I do jujitsu because like. I talk about it a lot, um, but it's funny. It's one of the so I sometimes just like if they need a photographer or whatever. Like I'll just photograph jujitsu stuff, or it doesn't matter. Just jujitsu stuff, right? But it's like super fun because it's wildly different. Like it's not people just excited to yeah. take pictures. You're watching um, people kicking butt. Yeah, like, and, like, yeah. and same thing. <laughs> moving it. fast terrible lighting yep. <laughs> um but it's just so wildly different yeah. that it's just like fun yeah um yeah because it's just so different so how you you had mentioned to me how did you kind of make that leap from doing just the like the rock band stuff or, or metal bands and then kind of moving more into like oops wedding events stuff like that goodness um i guess the best way to answer that so i started as a a live uh photographer for bands and it all kind of sprouted from that so of course uh being in a band too i'd make a lot of friends i network mm -hmm. with a lot of people and they built that trust in me and the questions would just start coming up and be like hey you know my wife say a vocalist from a band said my wife and i have an en engagement well you've taken photos for us you know live could you take photos for us here you know like my some of my first weddings engagement photos were all bands Right. Yeah, Por so cool. Portraits were banned. So I started yeah. getting into doing portraits for bands right. outside of live music. So it all just sprouted from that. Um, and then there was a point where it's not that photography didn't pay well, but it gets tough. You know, when you're if you think about it from a, a, a musician's perspective, they don't necessarily have a lot of money right. to put into sometimes, the especially a lot of the thing. Yeah. And and being in that position myself, I completely understand it. You know, you'll have musicians pay thousands upon thousands of dollars. I mean, I think the the, the stereotypical meme for it, it's like you'd spend $10,000 in recording costs and, you know, you buy this, you know, $10,000 van to drive 600 miles mm. to play, you know, a 30 minute gig to get paid $5 or, you know, <laughs> it, it's like, it's a thing that does not make any sense, but right. you're so passionate about it. You just do it. So like, understanding you know that perspective you know i was like well you know i don't know how much money is in this and don't get me wrong you can you can do very well in it but i wanted to explore outside of that and since i was doing more portraits doing you know weddings and engagement photos you know i was like well there's definitely a large market here for this too to supplement i guess that income per se um and that's kind of what led me to video too you know i'm like well i think you know, I know a million and one photographers. And like, you also did photography. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's that's just my bread and butter for right. a while. Um, and I was like, but how many video people do yeah. I know? I always hear about a lot of photographers, but I don't hear about as many video people. Yeah. And I was, you know, even um, like when I was younger to go to go back and I didn't even realize this until I was older. I was passionate about music, but when I was younger, I was in like the Polaroid era. So I'd yes. be running around as a kid taking a bunch of pictures on a Polaroid. And then I used to have this video camera that I would connect to the VCR cassette to film okay. through <laughs> the television and record onto the VCR. So you were like always doing that stuff. Yeah. And I realized, oh, wow, I'm like really passionate about both these things. I didn't realize that, you know, I used to do it as a kid all the time. And right, this know. isn't a passion. It's yeah. just fun. You're like, yeah. oh, no, wait, that is a passion. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, so I find myself going back into the video stuff well you know a lot of the dslr cameras have the video settings yes. on it anyway so yes. i fiddle with it you know a lot of the general concepts apply when it comes to your you know your iso your aperture right. you know like there's a lot of things that, that there's a crossover. mesh together yeah there is that crossover so i just found myself getting deeper and deeper into it and then um especially when it came to the music videos i had a few friends and one in particular um that I was really inspired by and I'd see his name all the time and and one day I just messaged him and this is kind of how a lot of things come across for me you just you message that one person or those few people that you're really inspired by and and you just throw something out into the universe and say hey you know I really like what you're doing I see all these videos you're making can I go on set and take photos for you behind the scenes right hits me up 
Yeah, are you free tomorrow? Oh my gosh! So and then from That's there, incredible. I was on eleven different shoots. Wow! And I had probably learned. I mean, he's been doing it for six, seven years now. That's incredible. And learned all of this in a six-month period, right? Like really accelerated, can just condense all of that in advance. You know, almost like having a mentor per right. se. Like you find the people that do what you're doing and what you want to do and you, you become friends with them you right, know and yeah. connect with them and learn from them and a lot of the time you get to work with them right which is awesome you know and that you don't have to make all the mistakes yourself right, right? <laughs> you can quickly get to where you need to be and you just bypass a hundred yeah you don't have to you reinvent have to the wheel yeah so that's kind of i just jump into things i just get really curious I find somebody who's really good at it. <laughs> I or or they find me in this case it was you who found me more in the like yeah, the wedding space. We have a mutual friend and um I have a few different videographers that I work with, uh, but one guy is actually going on like this amazing work adventure. I don't know exactly. He's going to be traveling. So I reach out to Dan. I'm like, I know you have a lot of friends in the industry. And he's like, oh my gosh, you got to check out this guy. He's awesome. Um, so yeah, and, and it worked out really well. So how do you know Dan? You know Dan from, I can't remember. So um, my day job, I work. Boring I work at, no. listening. <laughs> Dan is also one of our photographers, by the way. Yeah, I work at a community college. That's, that's, right, that's, that's right. That's my job. So um, I do photo and video for them occasionally. And there was like this flower show event we had. And I was just doing my thing. And he approaches me. I didn't. He, and we're talking about camera stuff. And next thing you know, we go on this, you know, two and a half hour tangent, just geeking right. out. Right. And his fiance is like, OK, it's time to go. Time to go. <laughs> you know, such, you know, that's. But it was just you being passionate and loving something and being willing to have a conversation with somebody about yeah. something you love. And that's the same thing with yeah. you, like just liking something and having the courage to like put it out there. Like, I love this and I want to do this. Is anybody interested? Yeah. Is there anyone out there that likes this too? Like, and it is, you have to, I feel like there's not a lot of people that you would come across every day in our industry. Like, if I go down my Facebook list and write like, who's into photography? Oh. There's not a ton of, you know, like, so you have to find like those certain people that are just, you're 100% passionate about it and we can talk forever you can right. learn we can so talk. much oh, yeah. the enemy can talk about poses colors uh, anything forever yeah or like other stuff <laughs> yeah uh, yeah anything and then when i talk to like other stuff that we shouldn't talk about on this and we do that no. <laughs> <laughs> but when i talk to my girlfriend i'm like oh my god look at this photo the iso is so high and she's no. like She's like, shut up. <laughs> She's like, I yeah, my phone camera is crazy sometimes. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, 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 no. And then I go explaining it and they're like, mm, I don't. <laughs> so so do you think maybe because like everybody's, you know, living the dream, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life, right? Like that's what everybody says and everybody wants that. Not everybody, but for the lion's share, people would love to be yeah. able to do that. So do you think that's maybe one of the things that holds people back is just kind of having that courage, you know, Eric, in your case, to literally talk to a stranger about your love of film or like Mandy, you're just like, hey, guys, so I do this. Who's interested? Like, do you think that's what holds people back? Just having the courage to just not to the courage to make friends with a stranger, I guess, really, yeah. and talk to them about yourself. You have to constantly get outside of your comfort yeah. zone, right? I find the people who are the most successful are the ones who are constantly networking all of right. the time. I mean, just me being here on this podcast is a prime example of that. Oh, yeah, right? because I then I'm tagging you and all the stuff that we're posting, promoting your work and, you know, just getting out there. Yeah, every every person you meet, especially in your industry, is a mutual opportunity, you know, to to get somewhere else, to learn something new, to make friends with someone, right? right? And to c connect and be a bigger part of the industry that you're in. Right. And that's huge. If you're if you're in a shell the entire time, not to say you can't be successful, but generally I find that people who are more active in their own community of what they're doing, you know, they're they're giving and they're also taking. And then, you know, part of it, too, and it, it kind of comes back to that little competition thing is that 
when you're in this community with all these amazing creators, you see from the, I, I call it friendly competition. Yeah, for you know, sure. You see all these amazing things come out of it because there's that little play like, yeah. oh, right, you yeah. know, you know, I'm, I'm making this and you're making that. And it was like, oh, well, I kind of want to one up you a little bit, try something different, right? People are trying new things. People are trying different things to stand out. And like generally the content that you're seeing and the things being made just keep getting better and yeah. better and better. I know that I will follow certain photographers because I'm inspired by their yeah. work. It's so beautiful. And you know, you see something that inspires you and it inspires you to make something even more incredible. Like, yes, you always want to be the best, but also you want to follow the best because they just inspire you to be yeah. even better than you thought you could be there was um it's it's kind of a funny story but related so <laughs> as a young child i was obsessed with arnold schwarzenegger conan the barbarian was one of the first movies i ever watched like i'm a huge daddy's girl i watched it with my dad so I love Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, so much. So much so, I, one time I even wrote him a letter. I'm like, hi, I'm a local nice. photographer. <laughs> I'll take your pictures, Rob. Like, I don't know, he'll never get back to me. But, like, you won't know unless you try, yeah, right? Yeah, seriously. So, in his book, he wrote he wrote a biography about just his journey, right? Like, being a young man moving here. And one of the things um, that stuck out for me, because he's wildly successful, right? Yeah. Like, he probably shouldn't have ever made it as far as he did. So, why did he? And he was talking about his bodybuilding days. And he said, so often people think there's limits and you just think that's the limit. And then every once in a while, you'll see somebody break that limit and you're like, that was possible. Like I just and he talked about it um, with uh, I think it was uh, bodybuilding or something. And it, there nobody had ever bench pressed X amount of weight. So it's just kind of like that's impossible and somebody did it and then people are like this is it this is possible and yeah. work harder work harder and it's kind of like that same thing like you see stuff and you're just like I can do this like there isn't a limit like it's the limit I put on myself in my brain yeah. that didn't exist anywhere else and most people don't uh fail they they quit yeah but it, before they can ever see so failure true. that's I, huge you have, I feel like there were, there are so many times where like, uh, you know, like we're very slow in the winter sometimes. Like we really are. It's so literally winter is coming. No. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> and I know in the winter, I won't have that every two weeks steady check that I had. I know that, but that's okay because I hustled all summer, all spring, all October, so I know, okay, we're going to budget a little differently. I'm not going to get a two every two week paycheck or, you know, but it's that whole, some people like, I can't, I'm not even lying when sometimes I'm like, you know what? I should just get a job. Like I, I really should like, oh, it's so hard, but it's not about it being hard. It's about changing your perspective. Somebody's not handing you money every two weeks. You're working really hard, maybe for more money but it's just not as consistent and you just have to do it like you know the first year i was like oh my, i was so scared i was like oh my god this is never gonna work i don't know i don't know what i'm doing why like, did i do this throw a rock on the street uh, someone you'll hit somebody a who says they're a photographer. Uh, it is it's a, it's a lot of, of pressure. pressure um I was I was very lucky that my husband was very much behind me in the whole sense of it. He was, you know, super supportive. But people will even come to me now and be like, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. How'd you do it? How'd you do it? And I'm like, I just did it. Like I just went to my boss's office and was Ain't like, Ain't nothing Look, to it. You know, so my two week these, <laughs> these people too that especially the people that we're looking at that inspire us too, like that's you're always seeing the successes right that's yeah. the things they post about i mean some people you know will go on and they'll vent online that happens but <laughs> but generally speaking you're seeing the successes you're not seeing the trial and tribulations of yeah. what they're going through so you know superficially it's like oh you know i'm so jealous you're doing so well and this and that and it's like 
sometimes you're not even thinking you're like oh i'm i'm doing well and you know yeah. like i don't even think the i'm outside doing outside perspective very well like, yeah you a like, little you, bit. yeah you you get to do what you want for a living it's like wow I, you know i wasn't even thinking it's that grand i'm always in the trenches i'm always working you know what <laughs> what is the the saying yeah. I, I see on instagram all the time it's like i quit my full-time job working 40 hours a week so now i can work 100 <laughs> hours oh, yeah. a week yeah, that's like but definitely you know? it like, they, or like the one it was like i uh, Small business owners, the only people who will quit their nine to five, five. to work 24-7. Yeah. yeah. But, it, but you have to think about that. Those are the things. Like, I weighed my options when I left. If someone's going to email me on Friday, I'm not going to be like, I'm not answering that till Monday because that's when I go back to work. No, it's a client. It's a prospective client. Yeah. I'm going to try to answer by Friday night. Like, exactly. I'm yep. constantly, even on vacation, no matter what I'm doing, I constantly am thinking... I better post something on Instagram, you know, just to see, get me out there, hashtags, yeah, yeah. whatever. I better, you know, I better check my email before I get on the plane. It you is know, a different mind frame. You are but you always have to be, working. You, know, you have to something. be in that mind frame. I'll take a call from like a bride, like we'll, me and Deanna will do like a call from a bride and like talk about her big day. And I'll be like, okay, it's at seven. I would never answer a my old work call past yeah. five. Right. You'd be like, oh. I'd be packing up watching the phone ring. Like, You're I'm, like I'm out. But like, you have to be passionate. And then those things don't matter. It doesn't matter yeah. to me that I'm in my bedroom at seven on the phone. Right. You know, yeah. I'm not mad about it when I come downstairs. Like, right. Like, Can you believe my boss <laughs> called me? Uh, your boss like, is such a yeah, jerk. Yeah. Like she was She's like, can terrible. you come today at seven for the podcast? Yeah, sure. No problem. You would never, but that's because we're passionate about what we do. Yeah. No problem. I'll come at seven. It's, I'll come anytime you want. So there was a story I, <laughs> I had told Deanna a few weeks back um, that made me really put into perspective, like how passionate you are about something. So I had a music or sorry, uh, a wedding scheduled on a Saturday. Right. And I had a, sorry, did I say? I had a wedding scheduled on a Saturday and a music video scheduled on a Sunday. Oh, in, yeah. This, up this in is New a York, yeah. right? And this music video had already gotten pushed back, right? Because oddly enough, it was too cold. Um, and now a few months forward, right? It, they're both up in the same area in New York. So I figure, okay, do the wedding on Saturday, stay overnight, and do the music video on Sunday. It turns out the weather says Sunday is going to be a complete washout. So on Saturday... Uh, you know, I'm ready to head up and I message the band and saying, okay, well, Sunday's going to be a washout. We already rescheduled once. Do you want to do the music video when I'm done the wedding? Right. And the wedding's from 2 PM to 11. Yeah. Right. So end up do the entire wedding, pack everything up, trying to charge all of my yeah. gear while I'm <laughs> there. Funny. Right. And we started at midnight and finished at 7 a.m. as the sun is How rising. Is that? That's insane. Right? And I, I think in my head, I'm like, if my employer told me to yeah. work from, you know, 2 p.m. all the way to 7 a.m. the night, and, you know, if you include the driving, I probably, had, it was like a three and a half hour drive up. So I'd yeah. probably leave it at like 10 a.m. right all the way to 7 a.m. the next day. I'd be like, no, but, absolutely yeah. not. But isn't it crazy the things you don't It's mind? a labor of love. When it's truly love a labor of love. Yeah. And you're like, just so in it. And then when you realize, you're like, yeah. I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why did I, I do that? <laughs> I think it's more, uh, yeah, it's that, it's like... Did I really just agree to work Saturday and Sunday? Like <laughs> I have video what? friends who were up That's for crazy. like thirty-two hours straight. Yeah, right. They'll they'll get done a wedding and then they'll hop on a plane and they'll fly over, you know, a few states and then do a music video and that like yeah, I'm, like I think I'm crazy and then I see other people doing things even crazier than myself and then I'm like, holy cow! That's it's, not yeah. that crazy. Yeah, it's. It's a labor of love. It is. It's a labor of love. Like it you've is. achieved something and it's like when you've created something magical, you're just want to see your creation grow and succeed. And you're like, yeah, of course, if I have to You'll do, do anything something, for it. Yeah, yeah, like I created this and, you know, I have pride of ownership. It's like in a it. minor obsession. Too, oh, you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Th that's so funny that you say that because I don't think a lot of people realize that that's so funny. I like for me. I obsess over, um, so we have a, a few different head photographers. So, you know, we could 
have like a couple weddings going at once and there's just a lot of moving parts and I obsess over what's the best way I can make sure that everybody has all the information and backing up equipment like okay we'll back up the equipment like this I'm like oh I got an idea guys we're doing this now too like those text messages go out where I'm like oh guys guess what I got another idea <laughs> Never. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no no one's ever throwing out their second set of memory cards we keep them forever and it's like all right Deanna's going but but just those little minor, yeah. the non-exciting details, right? The non-exciting details about how you could just make your business better. Like you obsess over mm -hmm. it and think about it. I put it into everyday life. Like you no matter to. what it is, I'll be like scrolling through Facebook and I'll be like, that's a nice photo yep. of that girl. I wonder if she took that. Or did she have someone take it? And then I'll have to click on her profile. And I'll be like, did a photographer take this? Or did she? Like, yeah. it's it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It, it's, it's, oh, to that, me, it's That looks great. Everywhere. What light? Where, where is that light coming from? Yeah. Does she have a I see You're a actively light. learning. And yeah, you're thinking. You are. You're constantly thinking, right? Okay, most people, right, they get done their job. And then what do they do? They sit on the couch right. and they watch television, right? Whereas... It's like, oh, how do I get better at this? This person's doing this. How did this yeah. person do this? I need to do this. How how can I position myself to be better, right? You, It's not, you're always evolving. Yeah. You have to, right? Everything is constantly changing. And you're in a very niche but competitive field yeah. filled with people who are just as obsessed as you are. It's so it's like, who's going to be more obsessed? Me, you know, or this person, you know? And that's what you just constantly on your feet like yeah. you're constantly thinking you know sometimes it, it can be doubt you know that's okay yeah. to have sometimes right it's not it's not all sunshine and rainbows but you just keep working for it just because you're passionate about it you love it and like i said you got a little bit of that obsession like you want yeah you got that drive you got that fire you know yeah. i feel like you can always learn there's just never. You can never stop there's, learning. There's it's always the infinite never, black hole. That's what I call it. it. Once you fall in it, it just keeps going I, and keeps going. And I'm that's why I follow like other photographers on my photography page. I follow other photographers because I'm like, how did she do that? Is right, that, like, that was beautiful. I and love I that. And I saw somebody put pantyhose over her lens. Oh, to get like, like that. To get yep. like this 70s like yes. vibe, like vintage vibe. And, like, and that I was so like, cool. now I'm, I'm Googling like all these different ways to edit it. And then when I looked at her reels on her, she put pantyhose over her lens. And I was like, are you kidding it's me? It's the stupidest thing, right? That but is it's, the craziest. You're being inventive. Or right? like you somebody think? put a Ziploc bag, cut it and puts it around their lens. And it looks like it has the whole like outline of like, a watery effect almost. Okay, okay. And like a sun flare here and there. And I'm like, that's the best thing I've ever seen. And it's just following people and their idea. And not necessarily like stealing them. I mean, I put my own well, spin there's on nothing, them. Like, there's nothing yeah, new under the sun. There's nothing. It's all it's influence, an influence and inspirations. And because you could melding. see something and you could... Even if you tried to duplicate it exactly, it, it would have you on it. It would be yeah. different. It would be your interpretation of what you saw. I don't saw. think any two photographers are the same. You could take a picture. I could take a picture. And then you could tell me and her, go edit them separately. And then we're going to put them next to each other. They would be different. Yeah, yeah editing is um, they, they editing be, make, does make yeah. a huge difference. It would be in... different. And I think that's like the whole community part. You have to like respect people. In that sense, like, oh, I'm looking for, you know, really, like, bright, airy, like, portraits. Okay, so you're really going to want to go with this person. You're, yeah. you're going to love Cherryville. That, you know, this is great. It's this style. is a, It's a style. It's and I don't special think, sauce. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't think any two people, and that's what sets you apart. But you have to have, like, we were just talking about it at my friend's wedding. We just shot my friend's wedding about, like, that mutual respect of photographers you know i'm not gonna be like emailing people and be like hey like you know it's you have to re and that's how you get your name out there and people want to work with you and collab with you and do all this stuff with you because you're a respectful person in that sense yeah that's why like um so we do have other head photographers mm -hmm. But it's not like, okay, work for me for this long and then you're just automatically a head photographer. Like, you, it has to be that style yeah. and that personality. And, you know, sometimes somebody will work for me for a long time and then something changes and it molds. And then sometimes somebody will work for me once or twice. And I'm like, yes, 
you mm-hmm. you have that same shooting style and then I always you know edit the images so it's that flawless but yeah it's it's finding that look that you like yeah like I know when I shoot with you I know like I go down a list in my head of you know things that I know you specifically like to capture right that are legit things right like, right you right know, uh, I know what and photos the, I like and it's stuff that that you'd naturally gravitate to because yes. you're already because I'm already in the yeah. field the industry I know what we're you know but like I know at the end of the wedding I got all the important things that I needed to get yeah you know like and that's part of someone reaching out to you and being like do you want to work for me right I'll teach you I'll show you. And I don't think there's, like, too much crazy support sometimes. And I think that's why, like, a lot of people don't want to take that leap. It's like, scary. Yeah. Rejection I don't is a scary you gotta find, thing. Yeah, you got to find somebody who's like, come work for me. Here's a camera. Uh, you're working on Saturday. Yeah. Hey, trust me. I, yeah. was, I was doing video, but when you were taking photos, I was taking notes. <laughs> I was taking a lot of mental notes, right? I'm like, the, okay. The wrangling of the drunk people. Yeah. Yeah. I, never, I still, I just, I don't work with Deanna a lot, a lot. You work with Nikki a lot. I work with and Kayla Nikki and Kayla. Um, Angelo la- sometimes. Yeah, last year I worked with Jess a lot. Jess is, yeah, Jess is awesome. But like, I don't come across Deanna all that much. And when we do, I'm constantly like, okay, like I'm working with my boss today. Oh. <laughs> like, let me whip out my phone. And I have in my notes, in my phone, every time she texts me or I see her do something, I write it in my notepad. Do you really? Always. Aww. Like, you know, this pose, make sure I get this. So now this. I'm going to write on the, on, on, the back of, on the back of my shirt. Now I'm just going to start wearing something that says, I love you, Mandy. I love you. So that you can write it in your notepad. Deanna or loves like, me. See, you know, you changed. <laughs> I, um, you changed something with like wedding rings in the past like year or two. Yeah. A different pose. And she was like, I'm going to try it. I don't know if it'll stick. We'll see what they all look like at the end. I'm like, okay. And I was like, oh, I better write it down. Because now I'm going to do it. Right. Well, that's so now one, one the... less person she's got to teach later on <laughs> about it. That's um, one of the awesome things about um, like owning the company. And I'm neurotic and insist on editing every single wedding because I feel like that's the final touch, right? Like you could have the exact same picture and give it to two different people and they'll edit it differently. Um, but because of that, I get to see every single picture that every single person takes. And while you all have a similar style, you know, somebody might see something on Instagram, I'm like, I'm going to try that. And then I look at the pictures and I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I'll send a little text like, <laughs> hey guys, so let's start incorporating this um, because I get to see like everybody's work. And it's really, really nice because you have a network. Yeah, yeah. Because once, w- granted, I don't know a lot of people, but I've had the opportunity to meet. A good amount of people so if somebody has that similar style and personality i'm like yeah you you need to be one of our head photographers so they're already incredible in our style Mm -hmm. and every time they do something awesome it just lifts everybody up and the company just you know you keep sharpening your blade oh they don't know they can come in um (laughs) tell them they can come in you can come in so uh, Nikki is also here, yeah. and she just finished up an engagement she session. Out? I, I oh. think she was. <laughs> Nikki just finished up an engagement session, and uh, the couples are. The, you guys, no, come on come in, on come in. on you're in. Fine, you're fine. You're fine. Here, <laughs> just just say loudly hello. Hello. <laughs> and then just be careful of uh, don't yeah don't stand in front of the camera. <laughs> it's fine it's fine you look beautiful you look yes. amazing there, there couldn't possibly be a better day nikki you want to shout hello hello oh you can you don't have to hide people can know you exist in the world um yeah so nikki you know obviously you're welcome to stay or not stay and then i i hope i don't seem like i'm being rude by i'm gonna just keep going okay I didn't, I didn't want to be rude. You know, we, we, we have um, one of our upcoming wedding couples, uh, really, really beautiful girl and handsome guy, and they look amazing. So they just finished up their session, and we're about to leave. And normally you would always, like, greet. Greet. Oh, oh my gosh, thank you yeah. so much. It was so great. Like, thank you so much. But I'm not. But I probably just did it, and I've just been rambling for no reason. I'm so sorry. But isn't that your favorite? Like, you do... Let's, like you do a couple 
and then you do their engagement then you do your wedding their wedding you know and then it's like I need to book you for maternity and then it's like I need to book you for infant and then like before you know it you're like 10 years down the road and you're like I, I think my cousin comes here like once a year Carissa yeah she I, probably I would... comes here once a year with her kids <laughs> more than that more yeah, than that it's true so She's here all the time. With them coming in, can I just speak to one of my favorite parts of this industry? Yeah, of course. Is the spontaneity. Right? Right? How one path just spider webs mm-hmm. off into a million things you never thought you would get into. So, for example, um, I was doing live photography. Uh, I did photos for a band. First time meeting them. Right? And they they were from New York. They came all the way down. They had a show near my neck of the woods. And they were the first band I did a music video for. It was one of those I reached out to them and say, hey, do you want to do a video? And they said, yeah, sure. Now I've done five videos to date with them. That's so cool. Right, And I'm best friends with all of them. And I see them yep. all the time. That's so it's awesome. the same band it's who the, yeah. wanted to stay up till seven in the morning with me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, it's working the network. On it's but it's just, just that one thing that just... Yep goes into a million different things and how many people I've gotten to meet because of them, how many oh, other yeah. bands I've gotten to work with, right? Uh, for example, that band that I did the photos and did all the music videos, they introduced me to the producer that my band went to to record an album. That right? is awesome. So it's just like crazy how one small thing you don't think is a big deal just turns into a big deal, yeah. right? And you just get sucked into it. Yeah. But you, you just can't be afraid to initiate it. Like to just... Yeah. Do it. You just have to And do let it. things happen. Right? Just yeah. let things happen. And sometimes they, they don't have to make sense at all. And I guess that, that kind of comes in with the luck. You know, if you're just every you're everywhere, you're putting in ten to twelve hours a day, yeah. seven days a week, and you're just going for it, all it is is just time and you know, it's going to you're gonna see exponential growth. Yeah. Right? It's just gonna keep building and keep building and keep building and all of a sudden you know, that tiny little hole you were looking to do is expanded into this, yeah. you know, whole entire world of opportunities, people, and that, you know, it's just, it's crazy. It right? is crazy. It's super it's crazy. It's like a whole timeline. Uh, um, you know, um, my cousin Carissa booked you for her wedding. My friend Danielle booked you for her wedding, sent her. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and then there was like an... Uh, her sister. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Her sister booked her. And before I knew it, I put up like, oh, my God, like we're planning our wedding. Like, does anybody have photography? You know, this is what I'm looking for. And they all like. Ding, and ding, it was ding, like ding, Cherryville, ding. Cherryville, Cherryville. I was like, oh, <laughs> all right, Cherryville. OK. But by that network, I met, you know, my family member. I got, you know, my family member. Then all my friends went with Deanna. And then I met with Deanna. We booked her for my wedding, you know, and it just. Then now she's um, a uh, a head photographer at my venue. That was the first time we had been oh, there. Oh, Bella Giorno. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yep. we're she's their, a preferred vendor We're their now. preferred vendor. And it's just like, okay, so like you had all my friends. Then you had my venue. And then like, you know, I tagged like David's Bridal. And my girlfriend at David's Bridal was like, oh, my God. Like, we want to post this photo of you in your dress. Can you can we tag your photographer? And I was like, yes. yeah, sure, no problem. <laughs> like, and it just it snowballs. You know, and you can't be afraid to ask for it because I actually, um, Carissa, when I did Carissa's wedding, I did a a friend of Carissa. She was just a bridesmaid at the time. Mm-hmm joking around about hoping she gets married one day because they weren't weren't engaged and like I know a great wedding photographer I'm just saying but um it's funny how much like you can't someone can't tell you yes unless you ask them yeah like you have to be like would you like to like even with the podcast so I've had a podcast in the past but I just didn't keep up with it regularly so I'm like right this season I'm going to keep up with it regularly I want to have like really interesting people on that could mm-hmm. like just motivate and inspire people bye guys bye. thank you so See you much later. See you later. um and I'm like so I'm just gonna like people that I think are really interesting people that you know 
inspire me to work. So I, <laughs> I'm like, I'm just going to ask them, like, hey, would you like to be on my podcast? And in my head, I'm thinking, no one's going to be on be on your stupid podcast, Deanna. You're a stupid loser dork. And I'm like, <laughs> that's like, <laughs> but I'm like, but whatever. I'm just going to ask. And if they say no, they say no. And everyone's like, oh, my gosh, I would, I would totally love and to. And you have to ask. Yeah. Like, you have to put your, and some people might be like, I really don't have time. Okay, like yeah, like okay, that's cool. Okay, cool, whatever. This is like, my first time doing one. To be dead honest with you, really, yeah. oh. you should do it. Be on podcast all the time. <laughs> yeah. I love the podcast. I really do. It's just like having a conversation about what you love, yeah. and I could about Talk people about who actually forever. know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, and it and it's nice. Yeah, it's nice because like I was trying to think about you know what direction should the podcast like kind of go and I was thinking Mm -hmm. about all the people in my life that I'm like oh like I really respect them or they just work so hard they're such a go-getter like there's just people in my life that I really really respect that about them and what I kind of saw they had in common was not being afraid to take their own path like I know that you're expected to go to school go to college get a nine to five get married, yeah. have kids and die. Started. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so, so one of the things that I had noticed is like people who weren't afraid to take that leap and in just all different, different levels, like some people at the beginning. And, um, it's just like kind of cool because I feel like a lot of people could make that leap, but just think like, Oh, it's too hard. Yeah. You hear success stories, but it's like these crazy famous people yeah. on TV. It's not normal people. Cause everybody's always telling you like, Oh, you can't do that. That's not for you. But it's yeah. like, but why? I feel like why you not? Have multiple streams of support. You have yeah. to like, yeah. like it wasn't, you know, it, it was, it's about, there's never going to be a good time to quit your nine to five. Like it's a scary thing yeah. to do. And for me, I felt like it was a good time for me. You know, we had bought our house, so I, you know, was good on, you know, all my paperwork anyway, you know, (laughs) all that. Um, Because, you know, I was worried. I was like, if I quit my job, we're not going to get approved for as much as we think we will, you know, Mm -hmm. and like I won't. But a lot plays into it for me. I was like, you know, I need to have a savings. I need to have this. Like, but the things that were more important to me were the freedom to be like, the freedom oh my not rushing somewhere rushing home like and i felt bad i was like my dogs are alone all day (laughs) Um, and then when we started talking about kids i was like oh i don't want to be away from my kids for 12 hours a day like i want a job where i could be like okay you know what i'm working saturday and sunday but i'm home monday through friday right okay that's fine you know and my husband's home friday and saturday like i'm not consistently like dropping them somewhere or asking some, you know, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Missing all this important stuff. It is, it is nice because, um, sorry, I just totally lost my train of thought. No, it is nice being able to do it because while you work crazy hours, like very, very early, very, very late, you are able to schedule it for yourself. So one of the awesome things is like, I have a full-time job. Like I've, I've achieved it, right? Like I've gotten to the point where it's a full-time job and it's awesome. Um, So it's nice that I'm able to have a full-time job, but I could always get my girls on the bus and off the bus. Um, I'm there for them after school. And I think that's what was most important to me was the freedom and like being present. Like, yes. I didn't, yes. I didn't want to constant. you know, I was missing a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I was missing a lot of family things. And like, you know, my family's going on a family trip, which we do almost every summer. And my boss is like, <clears throat> sorry, I don't have any coverage that week. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like yeah. 34 people are going. Right. Like this is like, going to be I, a lifetime yeah. memory. I'm not going to, I don't want to give it up because you, you can't don't want to be cover- shorthanded. Yeah. yeah. And I like that one summer, I, that's when I was like, kind of like into photography but was like oh it's a great hobby i love taking pictures of my dogs i love doing you know whatever and i was like i don't want somebody telling me i can't go on a family trip yeah you don't even know my family i'm going (laughs) you don't know my family family. it's knowing that (laughs) you have control of what what's going on right like one thing i always say with the job and i i've seen it with everyone in my life right friends family you know 
my friends, parents, you know, is that you could be a perfectly great employee, go mm-hmm. above and beyond, do everything perfect, and you can still get fired right, right on yeah, the yeah. spot. Absolutely. You get no notice, and and you're done. Nick, Nikki agrees. She's she's back here. <laughs> the wall. Right, like the, oh, it's there's a hundred percent. And there's 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 no remorse. And sometimes it's not even your fault, right? There's just extenuating circumstances yeah. from the company, and you're just gone, right? Yeah, I was at my job for eight years before I left. And it was a combination of like COVID. They were cutting numbers. It's a Mm. medical thing. You know, they didn't have a lot of patients coming in and they were kind of like, well, we don't really particularly need you. We're going to cut you down to like 15 hours a week. Oh, And I was like, that's not even. But then remember I got really sick and I was in the house. I was in the hospital. I got really sick with that throat thing. And they were like, oh, well, you know, we need you back. And I'm like, I can't be there. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. Can you work from the hospital? No. 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 Like, they don't care. Yeah. Like, you know, they were kind of like, well, you need to get your work done. Well, I've been here for eight years, and I'm I'm legitimately sick. And yeah. it just, it was the very beginning of COVID. So, you know, they were like, well, you know, we don't really know what to tell you. Yeah, so and just, I was like, okay, bye. Yeah, it's just knowing <laughs> Let me that... just get my phone charger, and I'll be on my way. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just... You're right. It's the whole, um, you could be a hundred percent there, give your all and they could still tell you, what do you mean? You can't work from the hospital. We'll have someone someone bring you a laptop. Like (laughs) it's just knowing that like you're responsible for your own failure. But for me, I feel much better knowing that I failed because of my own actions that I can keep myself accountable yeah. for than someone else telling me my value and my worth. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the thing I agree. that always eats at me. And especially in this industry, uh, you know, is that you get to actualize your own value. Right. Right. You get to prove that you get to put in the work and you get to state that. And, you know, and if you fail because of yourself you know right. don't get me wrong there covid right it, there are that's, yeah, always that, right. extenuating always, yes. circumstances but generally speaking you mostly have control yeah and and to me that makes me feel better yeah. knowing that the actions and the inputs i'm putting in i'm getting a direct output from yeah. it's not going through this whole, whole process yeah whole tree of yeah people. a tree of people and, and they like, well, get to according decide to our books your yeah. value isn't quite worth the profit my yeah. biggest problem as a photographer is i hope it doesn't rain during this session oh like God. like right, like that's one of our biggest like when i think about booking somebody so far out or like a wedding day i'm like it's gonna be downpouring <laughs> here's what we're gonna do like you just you have a plan you have a plan I think literally I've shot weddings in the downpouring rain. Yeah. I had an umbrella in my backpack yeah, for the last one. Like it's didn't rain fortunately, but yeah. the thought like, but you was have there. A plan. It's you about have being a plan. prepared. It's about yeah, but it's not gonna stop me. Like no. I still gotta shoot the wedding. Right. <laughs> like, like who cares if it's hard? Yeah, who cares? Um it's because it's a challenge and it's like, well, I've never shot in a downpour of rain before but these <laughs> might look cool and right but this could work yeah this might work so it's all about i think you're right it's all about that whole aspect i like you out nick yeah. okay <laughs> no 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 it's no problem nikki is tiptoeing through the two literally <laughs> just like ninja mode she just ninja mode behind the thing because um no, no, no. You're good. The best you're part good. is she captured that all, too. She just yeah. she, a nice little... First of all, she's been Velcroing something yeah. for 25 <laughs> minutes. I didn't and even I notice. hear her really like this. <laughs> One thread at a time. One okay. thread at a time. Okay. It's okay. All right, Nikki. Bye, Nick. You could walk in front of the camera if it's, it's easier. Fine, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. See you later. <laughs> Yeah, but it is when you when you have that ownership and you know if you do good, it's because you did good. And if you did yeah. bad, it's because you did bad. So you're like, you know what? The weather might be crappy. What do I do? What does the venue look like? Where can we go? Where can mm-hmm. we stand? Because you you know it's it's on you. Yeah. And it just makes you work that much harder. Yeah. And I like shooting 
at new venues. I like seeing new places. You know, I like... It's fun. It, it is fun. And it's like, oh, my God, we don't have a picture like this at all. Because right. we've never been to yeah, one of it's these exciting. places. You know, it's... And then even, like, one photo I found on, like, Pinterest that, I, you know, I was like, I need oh, I this love, photo. Yeah. I need this photo yeah. done on my wedding day. And ever since then, I see it done in all the albums oh. or, like that one over there in the corner oh yes 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 yes. i yes. loved that photo and i was like i have to have this yeah and now i make sure i do that at weddings yeah and it's I, it's just like the whole the network and it's like you gotta not be scared to do it and it seems from what you're saying too to me it it also boils down into just experience right and, yeah. and what i mean by that is that when you work for someone most of the time it's the same thing it's mm-hmm. routine it becomes mundane everything's you know sometimes things are unexpected but the majority of the time you know what your day is going to look like yeah you you wake up you do the same thing rinse wash repeat (laughs) yeah but when you're in a creative area you decide where you want to go you decide what you want you know one day i wake up i'm doing you know live photos for bands next day i'm doing weddings you know yeah next day you know next day i'm in a different state somewhere completely different you know the people change the people that's change. what i like Like you said the venues change like the venues change the people change you're learning all new things you're yeah. seeing all new things you're getting to be places meet new people it's, yeah it's and i like the small goals i do a whole thing send the album out done okay right tomorrow i have another shoot like I you, like you the see small, the beginning yeah. and the end. end. Yeah, it's not like just mindless paperwork. Yeah, like, oh, sending and I'm this in up charge. To the head office. Like I feel like I'm in charge. Right. So like I can't work. I know I can't work sitting at a desk for nine plus hours a day. Like I, my ADHD is all over the place. I can't crazy. do it. And my boss would be like, "Why are you up, <laughs> Mandy? Why are you up, Mandy? Why are you walking around, Mandy? Why are you walking around chatting like?" Because I can't stare at a blank wall and a computer for nine hours. Now, for editing, yeah, it takes a long time. I go to the coffee shop. I go to Starbucks. Right. I'll sit in my living room. You can give you yourself know. breaks whenever you want. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I get, I'm like, okay. And I'll set little goals. I listen I to podcasts. Get, yes. I, I will to get podcasts. to 30 photos. And then I'll take a 30 minute break. And just blast metal music. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. When I edit, I, so my goal, so when I get all the pictures back, I'll have one photographer and another photographer. So my first thing is I'm going to get all the head photographer pictures done. I'm going to go through all of them and I'm going to do, okay. And then I could take a break and it's like, okay, now I'm going to do the second shooter's pictures and those will be less because they don't do all the, the formals, yeah, the yeah. family formals. Those are just backups. And then I'm like, okay, net, take a break. Now I'm going to go through yeah. and do, and do Shopping, but I only have to get up to the reception like yeah and, uh, and I it's have funny to make you, stages yeah and it's but it's like fun right yeah. like you're like competing against yourself Monday I dive like head in from whatever I did all weekend I'm like that's it Sunday night I put my coffee in the fridge because I like <laughs> iced coffee I have to put it in the fridge Monday morning I'm don't even turn on the television hit the ground running hit the ground running take your laptop Go to Starbucks. And isn't it awesome that you can decide that's when you want to work? And that's when I work best. Like, I know Monday morning, I'm going to work really, really hard and get through a good portion, like a good chunk of albums. Right. Tuesday, maybe I'll start at 11. Right, right, right. (laughs) I don't know. And then you know what? When my girlfriend calls me and says, oh, you want to go to uh, TJ Maxx? Yeah, okay. Well, that's because I can do it later. That's like what's nice. It's not you know. My husband has a very, very oh, unpredictable yeah. schedule. He ba- like he basically doesn't have a schedule. He has to go to work all hours. Um, but what's been really nice is like if he randomly has an afternoon off, and I was like intending on going to work and like just doing albums yeah. or whatever, he'd be like, "Babe, do you want to go out for lunch?" And I'm like, "Sure." Yeah. And it's awesome because if I had a nine to five. With my husband's weird schedule, like, I really wouldn't see, see him, him a lot much, yeah. because it's, you know, it's not his fault, but he kind of has to go to work when he has to go to work. Yeah. Like, he was supposed to, he was supposed to be working nights, which is why I scheduled this. Then his schedule got changed and he was working days. <laughs> Oh, wow. And then his schedule got changed again last minute, and he had to go back into work. So it's just weird. But you know what? I was able to see him when he got home from work the yeah. first time this yeah. afternoon. Like, otherwise, like, my marriage, I'd be married to a stranger. Yeah. It's me and Mike were both getting home at, like, 6 o'clock, and it would be, like, 
truthfully like nothing but aggravation like we both were at work all day and it's like (sighs) you're both trained (laughs) yeah i'll start dinner you let the dogs out you know and then i'd be like i am not cleaning up dinner and he'd be like i'm so tired i just can't i'd be like "Ah." i get like and you only had like two hours before i'd be like i have to take a shower and then like go to bed like what in two you, hours, there was not. Well, and it's funny because that's another nice thing about working for yourself because not not that my husband like makes me go run errands for him, mm. but he doesn't have the same flexibility that I do in my schedule. So it's nice. Like he doesn't do it a lot, mostly because I always buy the wrong thing. <laughs> but like sometimes I'm like, oh, babe, if you have a minute, can you run to Lowe's for me? Like I said. I almost always mess it up. Yeah. So he doesn't ask me all the time. Like if he does, I'm getting like screenshots and like aisle yeah. numbers. Um, but it is, it is nice to be able to help somebody yeah. because you, yeah. Cause a lot of times, or even just like a friend, like you have a friend who just had a little kid and they're on a weird yeah. schedule and you're like, Hey, listen, just FYI, if you ever like, I'm around, like I can, and it's nice. It's nice to be available. Yeah, it is. And it's, I like, I like the availability. I like the freedom. Right. You know, I want to do things that I want to do. Like I want to go. <laughs> I just want to do what I, I want to do. I want to do what I want to do. I want to go grocery shopping by myself. <laughs> okay. Like that's my big, I do not want to bring my husband grocery shopping. <laughs> He's like, what do you want for the week? A uh, couple bags of chips. Like, okay, that's all you're going to eat? <laughs> Salt and vinegar chips all week? That's like, it. That's all I need eat. to do it on my own. I can start dinner. I can have dinner in one or two pots and everything cleaned up and put in the dishwasher. And I know it's it's fine. I don't mind doing that because I'm home. Right. I don't, I don't care about that type of stuff. And, like, women care about things men don't care about. I want to wash my floors twice a week. Like I have dogs. Like, were you so excited about being able to vacuum whenever you could when right? you got married? Wasn't like, that one of the things you were yeah, excited it about? Was. I can vacuum whenever I want now. Because <laughs> I would vacuum. Wonderful. I would vacuum. Yeah, you have a lot to look forward to. <laughs> but I'd be like, I'm not. I can't vacuum at night because I live in a house. I lived with my dad, my sister, um, my other sister, and they both had boyfriend. We had a full house. So, like, I'd be vacuuming at 8 o'clock at night, and I'd get, like, nasty text messages from my family. <laughs> like, are you seriously vacuuming? We're sleeping. And I'm like, oh, my bad. Like, I just got home from work. Sorry for cleaning the entire Sorry. house. Sorry. <laughs> Picking up after you. My bad. Like, so. I, so, if you're listening to this podcast, Megan. start your own business <laughs> so you can vacuum so whenever you, can you vacuum want. Whenever start. You want. That's it. Work. Sorry for vacuuming yeah. at night. Yes, that's that. That's the moral of the story. But it Put it all be, on the line so you can yeah, clean your get floors. It out there, it's I very was important. just. I want to do things like during the day when I don't have to worry about like six people. And now it's right. only me, and my husband, so it's a lot easier. But still, like, I want to mop my floors and let them dry before you walk on them. Like, <laughs> right? It's just stupid stuff that men don't think about. <laughs> like, it really is. I'm actually very like. Cleanliness. Oh, oh are you? Okay. So, so you get right. it. So you She's get saying it. this and I'm like, Loki, like, that would probably be me. You're like, <laughs> so honestly, that's the real reason I went into video yeah. Yeah. just so I could have clean yeah. floors whenever I want them. Like I wanted to vacuum my stairs yesterday and I was like, I have two hours to do that. <laughs> Because I have a dog who sheds, and I was like, I have time to do my steps You're like, I today. I can do this. I could do this. I can get Wait this till you done. do this, and then you can take pictures of your clean house. Clean house. house. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I can do that. Now and you then... can totally do it all. You've, do you've, it all. you've made it, Mandy. It. Made you, it. You've, you've made, made it. You've made it. <laughs> just I've vacuum in. No one's floors are as clean want. as mine. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> I, I like it. I, I say I just, goals. These goals. are goals. Yeah, goals. I just like the freedom. The freedom to the freedom to vacuum. Vacuum. What? Do anything. My cousin texted me and was like, You wanna go to the beach tomorrow? And I was like, Yeah, yeah, I do wanna go to the beach yeah, tomorrow. It's, it's yeah, <laughs> I, I do. actually do. After yeah. I vacuum. vacuum my After floors. I vacuum. <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> well, guys, I think I can't I can't think of a better way I to can't. wrap up the podcast yes. by saying <laughs> yes. Start your own business. Put it all on the line. Risk it all so that you can vacuum when you want. I want to vacuum whenever I want. <laughs> That's why I'm a photographer. And, and just if I can add one more thing. No, add you know, anything. Like, 
it, you know, to go from a perspective, because I'm in I'm this in this weird hybrid area. So right. mm-hmm. I, I work full time. But, but you're have, also like fairly but, successful. But I have my own LLC. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. I have my own business. Like fairly, this. you do really well for yourself. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and it's you have things to build on, right? Like there's not there's a million different ways to get to the same place you want to be. Yeah. Everybody's creating a new pathway and a different way to do it. Just because one person does it one way, right? Do- oh, yeah. Doesn't mean you need to do it that way, and you don't need to feel ashamed because you're not doing it that way. Yep. Right. Like. Right. 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 So in my case, right, my job is kind of that foundation, which allows me to afford, say, the equipment I need for my business, and it gives me that opportunity to grow my That's business huge. to the point where. I can now so say I'm a, I'm a musician. I'm very passionate about that. All of that feeds into the next thing, which right. feeds yep. into the next thing. And, you know. You can direct your path. Yeah. yeah. And, and for me, you know, what I would love to do, and I guess it's similar to what you're doing, you know, having the studio set up and everything and, you know, having a lot of people under you is you build, you build, you build. Right. And now say all my hours are tied up. I'm going at it constantly. You're, you're putting anywhere between 60, 80 hours a week into it. And, you know, okay, well, now you're starting to make a lot of money at it, which is a great thing. Mm-hmm. But now your hands are always tied. So yeah. what what I am extremely interested in is, is finding ways to make income passively, right? Yes. To to have a system. Right now you have all this money. Now, you invest now what do you it, do with it? Invest it into a system, a way that you no longer have to put that one hour to yeah. get that pay back right you can have things going on outside of your routine that you're managing mm-hmm. that makes that money for you and then what does that do that saves up that time for you because money's wonderful but time to me is king right yeah and like no, you say, I agree. being available and being there for those crucial moments it, it's a really weird thing because it's like you have to put in an insane amount of hours an insane amount of time and save up so much to to gain it back it really doesn't make any sense but but if like you procrastinate and you're sitting around and you're not doing that and you think oh well i'm I'm saving time you're actually hurting yourself right you know right whereas if you're just putting it in you're going for it like i don't i don't want to say be a workaholic but but you have to be at least in the beginning yourself because when you're when you're working for yourself and you're doing something you're you're building on something you know you're not making somebody else money yeah you you might be building something for yourself at a job don't get me wrong but like when it's just you and you're doing your thing Mm -hmm. like you're all those hours you're putting in is directly stacking on top of it towards what whatever you're going towards you know and if you just keep pushing at it eventually you know you can afford other things you know or other avenues that can make you monies in different ways where you don't have to put that hour in and then like if you want to if you want to take that vacation with those 35 people, like you're yeah. able to do that now. You can be wherever you want yeah. practically, you know, and you have this system that is is making you money passively and you with- save time back. And I mean, come on, time is our everything. most valuable yeah. asset at the I end of the agree. day. So to, to be able That's to, everything. Yeah, to be able to say that you can be passionate about something, do what you love, earn a good income at it, you know, to the point where you can invest and start having these systems that pay you and now you have the time i mean you're pretty much getting the best of you know all yeah. world it's like having your cake and being able to eat yeah, it too, yeah. Right? and like you can totally do it as long as you don't quit yeah, yeah. like you just can't you gotta keep give up and it's gonna suck yeah. <laughs> it's gonna suck big you gotta time. Keep going. i would say for the first gosh at least the first 10 years of my career um, so my adult life, like I started doing, doing photography, actually just, just before I married my husband. Um, so you, you graduate college and you have a couple years. So I pretty much my entire adult life, I worked every single weekend, every mm-hmm. single weekend. Like it wasn't even a thing. People would be like, oh, we're going out for drinks. I'm like, I'm working. I'm, working I'm, I'm always working Feel on that. the weekend. <laughs> right there. Um, and it was, it was a very, very long time yeah. where I gave up just those little comforts but then it got to the point where I met people worked with people long enough where I felt like yes like I with a hundred percent confidence could send you in my place and I know yeah. it's going to be the same thing um and then you know you're able to do things like still give your clients everything that you love and you're proud of but 
maybe you can finally now go out for drinks. Yeah, because you have and somebody then, else covering right. that for and you. Then, You've built this system that's as, feeding right. into itself. And you get better and better, and you can find more and more people. And just little things like how you edit pictures, you get to a point where you're like, this is incredible. I'm still doing what I love. I'm still giving people something amazing, but I can also have lunch with my husband yeah. if he just happens to be home. Like, you work incredibly hard, and then when you do it, you're like, I did it. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. I like those, like, little surprises here and there. Like, you know what? I can, you know, go to that recital, and I can do that. You worked you know, hard for it. You know what it was yeah. for me? Buying a pair of Uggs. <laughs> that was, I, I, um, so... I, I grew up, like, my parents were very comfortable, but very, very modest with their money. And yeah. um, I grew up, and I always worked really hard and tried not to go on credit. So I was always very, very modest with my spending, too. And um, then, you know, you have the business, and the first three years, I didn't even make any money because I would just invest everything right back in. And um, I would always see people walking around in Uggs <laughs> as people in new jersey do yep. and i would never buy it because i'm like so i'm not guilty. putting that on a credit card they're so expensive yeah. bah, bah, bah. so finally one day it was cold out and i'm like i'm gonna buy a pair of uggs and i totally can <laughs> and like that was it i was yep. like oh my gosh like i did it like i can buy expensive shoes and they're not even dress shoes they're stupid shoes that are gonna <laughs> look ugly in a year and um that like was like one of my Your huge moment. milestones. Yeah. Foregoing things. Sometimes you need to do that. Right? right. It's those sacrifices. And, you know, like you said, investing everything back in. Yeah. That's how you exponentially grow. It sounds stupid to be like, okay, well, you're finally making something. Why aren't you taking any of it? It's like, cause right back in. I believe yep. in this and I am yeah. going to, you know, make it as big as I want, as big exactly. as I can. And yeah. It's yeah. really it's really cool. Yeah, it's awesome. It's investing in yourself. It's inspiring. It's it's oh. investing <laughs> in your future self. And I pray a lot. It's not yeah. only I pray <laughs> a lot. Oh Lord, please. <laughs> I just think like, all right, what it what can like today Mandy do for next week, Mandy? Like Hell yeah. Like, can Mandy today make sure Mandy next summer doesn't have just seven weddings? Right. M let's make sure Mandy next summer has 10 weddings right and then let's make sure mandy in five years from today can buy another camera or right. can upgrade that you know i just consistently think i have to constantly reinvest in myself yeah hey, Deanna, how many how many weddings can eric have in the next year <laughs> <laughs> all of them all the weddings all, the, all, the weddings. all right girls every single wedding from here on out book it's a videographer eric. book it's a videographer oh my God. he's your man god you'll have no weekends left <laughs> Yeah, we, this is this is a good year for us. This yeah. this is a good year for us. Yeah, so that was busy. good. Uh, I didn't know if it was going to go down after COVID. Twenty twenty one was ridiculous. Comeback. Yeah, and then this year is still still just as good. So, yeah. So that's incredible. Um, and still booking weddings for this year, which is yeah. which is nice. Um, yeah. So just kind of, I always say, tell everybody, prayer and hard work. <laughs> that's what <laughs> yeah. it was. You, you need luck, but. If, I'm sorry. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's okay. You need luck. I'm sorry. No. We don't no. have that. Yeah, we don't have that. No. Siri doesn't have luck. Siri. <laughs> I don't know why but that yeah, was so it, funny. You can't have an opportunity if you're not prepared for it. Right. Right? Yeah. Like, if you do everything right and you prepare yourself, that's when luck will favor you. Exactly. You have to mm -hmm. work hard to get lucky. Yeah. Like, if luck just comes to you and you didn't put any of the work, you might not have the skills yet yeah. built up for that opportunity or you, you know, so that the more you're going at it, the more you're being present, you know, keeping yourself open-minded and, like you said, going for it. Right. That's, that's what's going to yield the best results. And at, at that point, like I said, it's just it's just time. Yep. It's just time. I think, what is time. it, what does they say, you know, 10,000 10, hours in any, you know, capacity of what you're doing right. makes you an expert at, at it. Everybody starts out terrible at something. You you know, you got to kind of be fearless in, in that 10, and get, you know – getting into it but you but know like all it is close. all it is is time invested you know time effort you know yeah. and quitting. you can you can 
be an expert at anything and be successful in anything. You just got to be in consistency. consistency. Consistency is huge. Not yeah. that say you can't, you know, fall off the tracks every once in a while, but being consistent is key too. You know? Yeah, I agree. A lot of consistency in everything you do. So. No matter what it is. Consistent vacuuming. Stop. Oh, <laughs> you should come it's to my like house and see the fur. It's You'd like, the, like that's the first thing I'm doing once this podcast is over. Come, come over and come look at the fur. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. It's just so if, if there's I'm an so image, if there's vacuum. an image for the podcast, it's just going to be a picture vacuum. of your carpet and the yeah, vacuum. of my fur of your clean of. clean house. Your house. Just we'll we'll put a picture. It's immaculate. White Why walls, is this the image? White Why carpet. is this the thumbnail for the podcast? You figure that one out. You People will be like, but out. like, can Mandy really like show us her floors, please? <laughs> like, but also we want to see your floors. I was really. That's a great podcast. Um, Mandy's any floors. Any chance Mandy will show us her floors <laughs> at any given point? And then that's that's your your only fans. It's only floors. Only oh floors. God. Just me cleaning. There's like a huge thing for it. Everyone's like, oh, there's a dog for her. There she is. Dog hair. Picking fur out of the corners of her (laughs) steps all day. Very exciting. Very exciting. See that? We're we're opening up new avenues. That kind of exists, though, where it's like really dirty carpet and somebody cleaning. It's just like so There was a British show show that I got hooked on for a while, and that's what it was. These ladies would go to these people's houses that were filthy. The hoarders? Uh, they weren't quite hoarders. They were just dirty, like dirty, dirty. dirty. And then they would clean it, and I it's loved so it. Satisfying. I watched it like even on TikTok. I love when people like wash rugs. Yeah, like you ever see the rugs, and he like sprays it, and then he power washes it, and I'm like, that's incredible. You're like this is the greatest <laughs> thing I've just ever bought seen. A new one, and just completely I know. I would have bought the new ninety nine dollar rug, but whatever, it's fine. No, this is way more satisfying. Yeah, it's satisfying. So we just so found satisfying. your next side hustle, though, right? Cleaning, cleaning floors. Doing. Cleaning floors. Clean, clean a floor that's really dirty. It gets ten million <laughs> views, and then you get the AdSense revenue off of it. If right? I went famous for cleaning my floors. And then you could just follow and then your what passion, you do is Mandy. you take you that money, you buy that money, you get a small <laughs> space, and you just throw another carpet in or right? something else. Yeah. You clean that, it gets another million views. You take I'll be that, at trade shows, yeah. like selling You vacuums. just take that AdSense revenue, you know, you take whatever Mandy's profit Mandy's fantastic buy floors. <laughs> yeah, right? I like great. it. Mm-hmm. There's there's fall a market back. for it. It is a fallback. That's good. <laughs> That's your ne- your next small business, Mandy, <laughs> is cleaning people's dirty floors, Excellent. but not if they really own it. Just in trade shows, trade shows. They can bring a piece of their carpet to the trade show just to see what you do to it. <laughs> I love that. Was, that would be the worst idea in the world. <laughs> that, would be, that. that would be a terrible <laughs> idea to cut out a piece of your carpet. It was so right? that was so silly. Um, <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh so much thinking about her being excited to vacuum. Guys, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so yeah, much. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Um, I got the giggles thinking about this and I can't stop. Um, so, yeah, if you guys have any questions about this, uh, they'll be tagged in the post and you can always hit us up or DM us. And thank you. Thank you all so thank much. You. And you guys have a great night, too. Thank you. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, you were course. awesome. That was fun. Oh, yeah, it was. It was a good time, right? So we were, we were talking about the little, you know, the cleaning fetish thing. When I was at the, the last wedding, I was with Angelo and um, Danielle. Yeah. And Danielle and I get on this crazy tangent. And when we started at the beginning, she was she was a little more on the introverted side yes. with me. Yes, yeah, she was very like, shy at but first. we broke in really well, but it was in the way I wasn't expecting. Okay. So everybody's eating right and she's like she's like so in your video reel are you gonna like include close-ups of people like sticking a salad in their mouth and i'm looking at her and i go what she's like yeah she's like and i was like what do you mean if i got like a 600 millimeter lens and it was like super (laughs) up close she's like yeah but she's like what if a client ask you to do that to be like yeah can you please film the dinner but like make sure that you get like me eating this like particular piece of food i want to remember that oh my god and that is went, the weirdest but, question. but it got it got better oh right? shoot i'm gonna close that I'm, you keep talking i forgot this just talk it stop oh you're good you're good all right so 